this video, I'm gonna show you how to remove white backgrounds or solid color backgrounds from logos, graphics, mockups, stock images, etc., making the background transparent. Okay, so the first type of image that I'm gonna show you how to deal with is one that has a solid color logo or graphic with a solid color background. So in this case, it's black and white, but it can honestly be any two colors, it doesn't matter. For these kind, I would just suggest using the magic wand tool. So the fourth one down here, if you don't see it, right click and it's right there, magic wand tool. And all this does is whatever color you click on, it's gonna select that color. But the thing that we have to take note of here is tolerance here. I like to keep mine around 25. And then the only thing we have to be aware of is this contiguous button. So when you click contiguous, then if I select this little black region right here, it's only gonna select that part, not this. I would have to hold shift and click on this one to have them both selected. But if I'm selected off of contiguous, if I uncheck it, then whatever I color I click on, it's gonna select all of that color throughout the whole image. So now if I click on this black, it's gonna select both of them. So in this case, that's what I would suggest. Unclick contiguous and then click on your logo so it selects all the color of your logo. And then all we're gonna do is go down here and we're gonna click on the mask button right here, this box with the circle in it, and boom, you've created a mask. And although it looks really good right now, there's actually gonna be an issue with this. So if I go down here and if I add a solid color, this is what I would suggest you do as well. Make it a fairly dark or medium-ish color, it doesn't really matter what kind. Drag it underneath and you can see that that'll allow us to see that there's actually quite a lot of fringing around this image. But since it's a solid color, we can fix it really easy by just clicking on our logo layer and then double clicking to the right to bring up the layer style window and then just click color overlay. And you can see whatever color is here will fill in everything including the fringe. So if we want it to be black still, just click on this and you can pick the color that you want. You can slide this to change the color, but I'm gonna go back to black and click OK and click OK and you can see that now the fringing is gone. If we unclick the background, we can see that's how it'll be when you see the transparency. If you want your logo to be multiple colors or two different colors or you have one that already has multiple colors, then there's an easy way to do that. All we have to do is click on our logo layer and go Control J to duplicate it, then hide the one underneath, click on the mask of the top one and then go to the brush tool and make sure that black is in the foreground and just erase one of the bits that you want to change color. Then bring the other one back and then now we already have the color overlay here of both so if we just double click on this one, this will be the apple so if we click on this we can change it to red and click OK and then the other one up here since it's underneath it'll only show on the part that's revealing which is the um, leaf up here. But you can also use the magic wand tool for images that have multicolor backgrounds as long as they are solid colors as well. In this case I would suggest checking contiguous and then just holding shift and clicking on all the areas that you actually want to select. So in this case I think I've selected everything of that color and then I can hold shift and click on this other one and now it'll select both of them. But we don't want to select the background. We want to select the burger and the title and everything here. So we're going to go up to select and go inverse. And now it's selecting the crown and burger and letters and stuff. But just like last time, if we just add a mask to it, and then if I zoom in, you're going to see that the edges have a lot of fringing and like junk going on the outside as well, which we can't fix this time by just overlaying it with one solid color because there's so many different colors in this image. So I'm going to undo that so that I have my selection again and in this case I'm just gonna go up to select modify and I'm just gonna contract it by one to start I'm gonna see if that works and click OK And you're gonna see that now that edge just kind of shifts in a little bit so now when we click the mask it kind of fixes a lot of those issues. We still have some over here, but that's just this image. If you want to touch up the selection a little bit more, all you have to do is double click on your mask layer here, which will bring up the select and mask properties. And I would say all you have to do is slide the radius over just a little bit, maybe smooth just a little bit, and then I would shift the edge back a little bit. And that should do a pretty good job. You still might have a little bit of fringing in some places, 
but that really just depends on how the quality of your graphic. And then just make sure that your output is to layer mask and click OK. And you can see that that did a pretty good job of smoothing out our edges and making our graphic look a lot better, especially when we view it with a transparent background. The second technique that I'm going to show you is using select and color range. The important thing to know about this one is you can't have any of your background color in your image. So in this case, my background is blue and there's no blue in Homer anywhere. But if the background was white, I couldn't use this technique because it would also get rid of his shirt. So for this one, all you do is click on your background color. So I clicked on this kind of darker blue, which was his shadow. And then I'm going to go over to this plus right here, this plus picker, and I'm going to click on the lighter blue over here. And that's going to add mo both blues to my selection here. You can see if I slide this fuzziness to the left, that's not going to look good. It's too jaggedy of uh, selection. And if I go too far to the right, then you can see here this gray starts to be added in his shirt and his eyes and stuff, which means that within my blue selection, I was selecting some white as well, which was getting rid of some of his shirt now. So I want to slide this back until I have a very clean, like silhouette looking image. And I'm going to click OK. And now again, if I just click on the mask, you're going to see that if I zoom in, there's going to be some kind of rough selections up here that we can get rid of by, if I go Control Z to go back, we can go select and modify again, contract by one, and then apply the mask. And you can see it gets rid of all that extra kind of junk that was floating around in the hair and whatever. So good solid selection, but you can now see that within the black here, that now our black lines are kind of disappearing. So very similar to the last one here to fix that, we just double click on our mask layer over here to bring up that select and mask window again. And this time we're just gonna add contrast to it. And you can see that as soon as I do that, the black lines are coming back and that should do the trick. Just make sure output is to layer mask and click okay. Now when we zoom out, you can see that the black lines are solid again and we have a very good selection around the outside to have a transparent background. For this next image, I'm going to show you kind of three different quick ways to deal with this one. So let's just pretend that you want to keep the white lettering. In that case, I would use the magic wand and I would make sure that contiguous is selected. So that now it's just selecting the white all the way around this logo. Then we can go select inverse and then select modify contract by one click ok and add the mask and there you go that's quickly done where we've got rid of the background but we kept the lettering on the inside but if you don't want to keep the lettering if you want to keep the lettering the same color as the background then all you have to do is over here on the right double click it'll bring up your layer style window and we're going to slide this top one on this layer we're going to slide this one left until it kind of gets rid of everything around the in, within the white. Then you're going to hold alt and then separate these two to smooth out the selection so you don't get any of that fringing. So just move it out as far as you need to to make it look good and click OK. And now when we get rid of the background, you can see that we very quickly made a transparent logo. The final method that I'm going to show you is using quick selection. So the fourth one down here, right click, quick selection, and use select subject. So when you click this, Photoshop is going to do a pretty good job usually of making a selection around your subject. But in this case, you can see that it's missing. It's also selected this patch of white here, here, and here. So I'm going to use this minus one right here to just click in there, and that'll get rid of that part of the selection that part and that part. Now it's just the cat with uh, the headphones and everything that is part of my selection. Then I'm gonna go up to select and mask and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift maybe the radius in a bit. You can see when it's all the way down at zero you can see some fringing around the hair up top here. So if I move that over you can see it kinda takes away some of that fringing. I'm gonna smooth it out a bit like I did on the last one and maybe shift this edge just a touch. And to me that looks pretty good for a quick selection right there and just output to, this time we're gonna have to change it to layer mask 
and click OK. Now, you can see once we've done that and we have this background set here, you can really see some of this fringing still. In this case, we could go back in here and mess around a little bit more to get a different selection, but I'm gonna just do this. I'm gonna hold Control and click on my layer mask to get me the exact same selection that I just had. Then I'm gonna go up to Select, Modify, and Contract. I'm gonna contract by one. Then, and you can see it moved in just a bit. Then I'm going to go over here, I'm going to right click and delete the layer mask that I had already. And then with this selection the way that it is, contracted a bit, I'm just going to add a new one on. And you can see that that pretty much fixes all of my issues. It looks pretty good. And especially when I get rid of the background and have it on a transparency, it looks really good. There's maybe just this little bit right here. So if you have anything that you need to touch up, all you have to do is on your mask, Black means erase and white is bring back. So in this case, I got to bring this back and I'm going to use a brush on white to do that. Right now it's too big. So I'm going to shrink this down, the size down so it fits on his finger. Hardness around 75 is good. And I'm just going to paint in the rest of his finger there. So just kind of go around your image, like around the headphones here. I can see I can paint some of that back in. Um, you know, so just go along the edge and uh, fix up all the little pieces that you think you need that we kind of got rid of as part of our selection. If you have a piece that's sticking out like this that you don't want as part of your selection, then just flip this to black and do the opposite. Just paint it out to get rid of it. At this point, we are ready to export or save as a PNG with a transparent background. But before we do that, you kind of have to make a decision on whether you want to save it as the size that it is or if you want to trim it down so it's only dealing with the image that you are dealing with. So let's go to this fast food one for example. You don't want all this extra space around here. You just want it to be the logo maybe. So the first thing you have to do is make sure that your background is not selected. So get rid of it so that you see the checkerboard see-through background. Then you're going to go up to image and go to trim. In there, you're going to say based trim based on transparent pixels and click OK. That's going to get rid of everything else that's on the outside. So it's now just your logo. So you don't have all this big dead space that's around it. But if you don't want it to go right to the edge of your graphic or logo or whatever, you want to leave a little bit of space, like maybe this amount of space and this amount of space, then use your rectangular marquee tool. Like let's say you just want to chop off this kind of section over here, then just draw your box the size that you want your final export image to be. So let's just say about like that, and then just go up to image and go crop and that's going to get rid of all the extra stuff that you don't have in your box. If your image is perfect the way that it is, or you've trimmed or cropped and you're ready, then all you have to do is go up to File and go to Export, and you can go Quick Export as PNG, but I would suggest going to Export As, which brings up this Export As menu, and all you're going to worry about in here is over here under Format, make sure it's PNG and not JPEG, and make sure that Transparency is checked. So you can see that that puts in the checkerboard background, which means it's transparent. If you uncheck it, your background will be white. So make sure it's checked. Everything else here should be good because we've now declared what the size of our image is going to be. It's going to be whatever we either trimmed or cropped or left as our original one. And then all you have to do is go down to the bottom here and click export. Then obviously you just name it and place it in whatever folder you want and click save. And that's it. That's how you'd make a transparent background for any logo or image or whatever in Photoshop. If you got something out of this video or you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I will catch you next time.